Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I thought I'd just do a quick video today looking at the antenna uh, amplifier for this little 40 meter tramping rig which I'm building up. Um, you would recall I said in the initial video that I was going to look to use a J310. Um, I've changed my mind on that. Um, I sort of acknowledge that uh, that particular device is obsolete and quite difficult to get hold of. Um, I'm pretty sure I got a whole batch of them, about a hundred odd, through AliExpress um, a year or so ago, and that particular batch has been good for me. They've worked well. Um, having said that, I have purchased other devices from AliExpress, and uh, they failed uh, in that all the magic smoke got let out, which um, was a bit disappointing. So I guess you, you get what you pay for, I suppose. So anyway, for this particular build, what I've decided to do is just stick with the um, you know, the common 3N, uh, or 2N more the point, 3904, little BJT, uh, and just make up a little simple Class A amplifier. Um, I don't want to have too much gain. Um, obviously up on the scope here, the, the yellow is the output and the purple is the input. Um, got a voltage, uh, a voltage amplification there of 4. Um, I set that to be 4. I, I don't want to have anything higher. I don't want to risk uh, amplifying too much the noise as well. So um, just a little bit of amplification there just to boost up the, um, the signal coming in uh, before being fed uh, into the rest of the amplifier. Um, just for interest's sake, I'm going to change the topology a little bit on this one and have uh, the antenna is going to come in. Uh, it's going to go straight into a, uh, a 40 meter band pass filter, which I've designed up but I haven't built yet. Just waiting for a couple of capacitors to turn up. Uh, that will serve both... Um, that will be in there for both the transmit and the receive, so it will serve also as the low pass filter for uh, the transmit. Uh, and then once it goes through that band pass filter, it will then go into the antenna relay switch, which will then switch it between um, the receive circuit, uh, in this case it will be directly into the uh, antenna amplifier, or on the transmit side coming straight out of the power amplifier. Um, so that's what I'm going to do there, just to save one... Um, one R L L8, well, I shouldn't say line replacement unit, but say one little circuit board um, on the radio. Anyway, so back to this one here. So, like I say, the voltage gain there of uh, or voltage amplification of four. So, in terms of the circuit itself, um, kept it reasonably simple. Um, it's just a little Class A. Let me just go back a little bit there. Uh, class A amplifier using the uh, the two N three nine zero four. It's in a common emitter configuration. Uh, 12 volts, a um, little bit of degeneration there, which I'll talk about before, but that was set to give the overall amplification uh, a, a voltage gain of 4. Um, there'll be a transformer in the collector circuit, which will transform that 50 ohm load back to that rule of thumb of 200 ohms for the uh, the collector of the transistor. And then the, uh, the T1, the input transformer there, will match uh, 50 ohms coming from that bandpass filter to whatever resistance is being seen um, at the base here, um, which will be a combination of, as we'll see later on, uh, the biasing resistors as well as that, that degenerative resistor there. So anyway, uh, just to sort of quickly go through um, the maths which I used, again, not a tutorial, this is just a video log of, of what I did, right or wrong. Um, I'm going to need beta DC, so I went to the spec sheet, um, and the other thing which I have uh, elected to use as a quiescent current through this device uh, is 10 milliamps. Uh, don't want to go too high because it's running on batteries. Uh, don't want to go too low either. So um, 10 milliamps is a sort of a nice stock standard um, value there. And from a spec sheet gives us uh, the maximum amount of gain. Right, so beta DC, um, I'm going to use the geometric mean of the minimum and maximum beta that's given for 10 milliamps in the spec sheet. So square root, 100 times 300 equals 173. Right, so in terms of biasing, uh, I'm going to use again that, that rule of thumb of having, um, or that, that one that's often used, the emitter voltage. I'll set that to be 10% of our VCC. So 10th uh, of 12 equals 1.2 volts. We know that there's 10 milliamps flowing through there. There's nothing flowing from DC point of view through here because we have a DC blocking uh, resistor, say again, blocking capacitor, they're 100 nanofarads. So therefore, if we know the voltage, we know the current, then we can use Ohm's law to work out what that resistor is going to be. So 1.2 volts divided by 10 milliamps comes out at 120 ohms. Standard value, so I'll use that. 
Right, so in terms of now working out uh, the voltage divider biasing here, uh, to make that nice and stiff, I'm going to have um, 10 times the base current flowing through there for a start. So to work out the base current, it's going to be um, our collector current divided by beta DC. So 10 milliamps divided by 173 comes out at 57.8 microamps. So I want to have 10 times that flowing through, the, through this, like I say, uh, in the quiescent condition. Uh, there'll be 10 times through this one, but through R1, we're also going to have that additional base current coming out of the, the, uh, out of the base, which will turn around and flow up there. So uh, this one will have 11 times, which we'll, we'll see in the maths. Right here, so putting that all together, um, R2, our, our lower resistor of that voltage divider. Um, again, from an Ohm's law point of view, we know the voltage at this point is going to be 1.2 volts, which was here, plus 0.7 volts for the emitter base junction, gives us 1.9 volts. So 1.9 volts here, divided by that 10 times um, the base current, from an Ohm's law point of view, we can work out R2 is. And that's exactly what this is. So 1.2 plus 0.7 equals our voltage at the base, divided by 10 times the base, uh, the base current, that is, gives us 32.87, so we use a standard value of 3.3 K ohms. R1, that's the, the upper resistor there. Um, it's going to be the VCC minus the voltage at the base. So in other words, we're trying to work out what the voltage is sitting across this. 10, uh, say again, 12 volts minus this point here, which is 1.2 plus 0.9, um, divided by 11 times the base current. So the additional 10 plus the additional 1 gives us 11, comes out at 15,884, or 15 k ohms as a standard resistor. Um, so that's good, so that gives us our three biasing resistors. Um, now in terms of uh, T2, that's the one that's going to transform 50 back up to 200. Um, let, me just go, let me just zoom out a little bit, make it a bit easier. Uh, we need to work out what our turns ratio is going to be. So turns ratio, or N, uh, is a square root of the impedance transformation. So 200 ohms divided by 50 uh, gives us square rooted 2. Um, so valid combinations for that, and I'm going to start at 5, 6, 7 uh, for, 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 for a reason I'll just talk about. So 5 for a turns ratio of 2 will give us to 10, 6 to 12, 7 to 14. Um, I'll start with the smallest one first, least amount of windings. And I just want to double check that another rule of thumb is being met. And that is the, that winding there, which is going to be 5 turns, the inductive reactance of that winding uh, needs to be four to five times the resistance that it's connected to. So four to five times 50 is what that inductive reactance needs to be for that particular winding. So back down again, we know that um, XL equals 2 pi FL. Um, we know that five turns for an FT37-43, which will be the core I'm going to use for this particular transformer, is 8.75 microhenries. Our frequency of operation is going to be 7 megahertz, so I can plug it into XL. XL equals 2 pi F, so 7 megs times L, our 8.75 uh, microhenries, comes out at 384 ohms. So that's good. That meets our criterion of being at least um, 4 to 5 times that. So we'll run with that one. Uh, big tick in the box. Right, so the last thing, um, I think I, I'm pretty sure I did, I, I just I did talk about it, I'll say it again anyway. So um, what I did is I initially had this resistor here as a 100 ohm trim pot. Um, I could do that because there's no current passing through it because of that DC blocking resistor there. Um, I set up the circuit and then uh, went for a voltage gain of uh, 4. Uh, the input to the base, uh, and that turned out to be a, a value of 15 ohms for that particular device there. So now in terms of working out what this transformer needs, looking here into the base, uh, I'm going to see R1 in parallel with R2. Um, R1 is in parallel because of this decoupling capacitor up here. Um, that effectively, from an RF point of view, is shorting the VCC line to earth. So in other words, that whole line there crowbars down to here, and we have R1 from an AC point of view in parallel with R2. 
and then in parallel, those, that combination is then in parallel with what's been seen looking into the base, which will be beta AC multiplied by this combination here. So it's going to be a little RE, which is on the in the input side, or I should say internal to the transistor, um, as well as uh, that little value there, little RE, being added to um, this parallel combination here. So RE in parallel with RDG. And like I say, that combination there added to that little RE multiplied by beta AC is what's being presented here. And that then is also in parallel with R1 and R2. And that's exactly what we see over here um, uh, in, a, in a formula, um, which is just essentially what you'd see for parallel resistors. So 1 over a combination of 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over what we're seeing at the input to the base of the transistor, beta AC multiplied by little re plus that parallel combination there of the 120 ohms emitter resistor and our 15 ohm um, degenerative resistor. Right, so um, another unknown there is beta AC. So beta AC is our uh, transition frequency for the transistor. So again, back to the spec sheet, that uh, gives us a value of 300 megahertz. Uh, mod, uh, divide that by our frequency of operation. 7 megahertz gives us 42.8. So that's what we'll use for that value right there. Uh, another unknown is little re. So little re is 26 millivolts divided by our emitter current in milliamps. Um, so we'll just make that equal close enough. Uh, the only difference is, is the base current, which is next to nothing. So 26 millivolts divided by uh, 10 comes out at 2.6 milliohms. So, having done all that, um, I mentioned before at our DGM was 15. We can now plug that all back into, into this, which I won't go through. Uh, turn the handle and out comes a value of 471 ohms. So that's what's being seen at the input to uh, that particular amplifier. Uh, so in terms of actually then working out what that matching transformer needs to be to match uh, the 50 ohms from the bandpass filter, uh, again exactly what we just saw uh, with regards to uh, T1, same formulas, so our turns ratio is the root of 471 ohms divided by 50 equals 3.07, um, I'll start with say 4567 here, um, multiplied by 4, 12.28, 15.3, 18.4, 21.5. Um, I know five terms was already good for on our T2, so I'm just going to use that one again. Uh, it's not it's, it's not a perfect um, ratio there. It's, well, it's not an integer more the point, or very close to an integer, but hey, uh, rough as guts, I'll just use 15 to 5. Um, or 5 to 15 more the point. So 5 times 3 equals 15. Um, and we know before that um, for an FT37-43 um, that's going to come out at um, 384 ohms, the inductive reactance, so there's the XL for that particular uh, winding. So for the same logic that's going to be good enough for our, um, for our 50 ohms. And that's it. So that's all we're done there. Um, seems to be working well. So at this stage of the game I'm just going to now probably start working on the variable frequency oscillator uh, and the BFO, in other words the, um, the little Arduino and the SI5351 and the little screen, start making that up. Uh, in terms of the bandpass filter, um, I'll, I'll do a proper video on it, it's um, just going to be a little uh, two-tuned circuit there, it, it's basically the, um, the circuit that's presented in um, solid state design for the radio amateur. Uh, but for these particular um, capacitors here, rather than just using some small little um, ceramic um, capacitors, I've decided to get um, some slightly more beefier ones in terms of the voltage rating. So it's got some 1kV ones, which is a bit of an overkill, but they are still nice and small. So uh, that's what I'm looking to, um, to turn up first before I build that and test it. Okay, I want to say 73 is yet. Um, like I say, not a tutorial, just a video log. Um, the plan will be to to build these all, all these circuits up and then um, put them onto to a larger piece of copper board first, um, test that probably as a whole. That's what I'm thinking, uh, and then I can look to to, to ram that down into a into a smaller container. 
Okay, cheers all. See you next time.